Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're having an IP debate, and in the right hand corner is Stefan Kinsella for or against IP. And in the right hand corner, there is Chris LaRue, who is for or against IP. We will find out in this debate. And if you want more content <laughs> and more debates like this, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, previously, we've agreed. Uh, we didn't flip a uh, coin. Stefan Kinsella asked Chris LaRue here. Uh, if he wanted to go first, Chris has agreed to go first. The rules are quite simple. The beginning of this, discussing IP, Chris gets to talk for three minutes, and then Stefan Kinsella gets to talk for three minutes, and then uh, Stefan Kinsella gets to ask Chris LaRue a question of which he has two minutes to answer, and vice versa. Uh, we're planned for a 20-minute uh, talk on this, and then after that, any uh, time that's needed, um, will be decided, and if everybody decides, then we'll go on for longer. So, okay, Chris, three minutes, starting now. Well, I believe, you know, Stephen, uh, Stefan, and I have I had some preliminary discussions, and I believe that he has essentially uh, admitted that my position is correct. And he essentially admitted that uh, contract rights are absolute in an anarcho-capitalist system, and uh, they're not subject to his interpretation of what's scarce or uh, uh, rivalrous, his opinion of these things. Now these things may be absolutely, they may be worthwhile concepts, but um, all he has is his opinion of them. And he admitted that that um, interfering in a contract in, in uh, these things that are uh, what he calls IP, I don't call them that, uh, would be violence, as I said. And the principle is nonviolence. I apply the principle of nonviolence, uh, you know, to all property rights, and and that's it. I don't think he can uh, weasel his way out of that position. So I'll that's... hand over my time. Okay. Hold on a second. Stefan, go. Okay. I'm actually not sure what you just said, Chris. Um, that you you maybe should introduce your position so we can know what it is instead of saying I've agreed to it already. People here haven't read our email exchange. Um, you, you have told me that you don't agree with IP and you don't like labels and you're not a libertarian but you're an anarcho-capitalist. Um, you don't think scarcity is necessary for property rights and yet you conflate scarcity with, um, uh, with uh, lack of abundance which is not what the technical term means as we use it. So I actually am not sure what your position is. I've, it's not like you got me to admit tonight that I believe in contract rights. I've long been an advocate of cop, copy contract rights. So if your argument is simply that contracts should be enforceable, I don't know why this is a debate. I've never disagreed with that, and that's got nothing to do with IP. Nice. Uh, the, the mistake people make is they believe that you could come up with something similar to today's modern IP by using contracts. And as I think I've showed pretty definitively, uh, you can't. Rothbard made an attempt to do it, and you just can't do it. The, the reason is because property rights are what's called in rem. They're good against the world. Contract rights are only between two people, so those are called in personam rights. You can't use contract to create a right good against the world. So, <clears throat> so l let, me, let me state what my position is. I would define intellectual property as a type of right… Uh, protected by modern legal systems in non-scarce, which means non-rivalrous, by the way. It doesn't mean lack of abundance. Okay? It means non-rivalrous resources. There is no debate whatsoever among any economist in the world that ideas and patterns of information are not rivalrous. I mean this is well known. This is why intellectual property laws are enacted. Now they would include copyright, patent, trademark, and trade secret. Uh, and other types of li rights. Now, in my view, these rights are completely illegitimate because they contradict and undercut property rights that libertarians and anarcho-capitalists anarcho are in favor of. So that's the problem with them. Um, now, you have some argument in your previous video with Shanklin that maybe it could be done by arbitration, and then you confuse it with a contract right. So I think you have to have a coherent understanding of the nature and purpose of property rights, and you have to understand what contract is. Contract is not a binding promise or, or even a binding agreement. A contract is just the, the way that an owner of property assigns title to someone else or transfers it. That's all. So if I give you a gift of a watch, 
that's a contract. If we make a deal and we exchange a watch for money, that's a contract. Um, if we make a bet and I say, I will give you the watch if, Ten the seconds. if it rains tomorrow, that's also a contract. It's a transfer of property rights. Uh, I don't know what it means for third parties to interfere with contracts. Third parties interfere with property rights, not with contracts. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of common ground there, but the hold essential... On, hold on a second. Uh, I think now Stefan gets to ask you a question. Oh, okay. And then you have two minutes once Stefan's asked you the question. W wouldn't, it, wouldn't it make sense for him to go since I just went? I mean, I, I'm okay with him taking his turn Well, he, he went first on... Well, I, okay, Chris can ask you a question, I guess. But, and then Chris, you it's up to you, whatever you prefer. Well, I mean, I would just say that, you know, listen, contract rights is all there is. There's no nece there's no necessity for any concept of uh, scarcity or rivalrousness. So and, what's, your, uh, what's, your, what's your question? I don't have a question. I, I, I don't so believe you just, that you want, you want two Mr. Minutes, Kinsella then. has any answers. You want two minutes, then, to, to go. What, what am I going to answer if I don't have a question? I, what's no, your, you want, do you want two minutes, then, Chris, to, to, to speak again? What, and then, Chris, why, and don't then, you, why don't you tell me what you disagree with me about? All right, two minutes. Go. Well, you know, anything that people trade voluntarily in an anarcho-capitalist system is, by definition, property. They couldn't trade it if it isn't property. And, uh, you know, your, your opinions about what's scarce or what's rivalrous are irrelevant. Those two people made the contract. They've established in an anarcho-capitalist system. They've established third-party arbitration in the contract. We, we can assume that because that's uh, I think it's a norm we all agree on, and we can sort of assume that most contracts are probably going to have that, or all contracts are going to have that. I, I think, and, or we can discuss that. And um, you know, I don't see anything else worthy of discussion. That's it. That's the solution. It's either contract, voluntary contracts or involuntary contracts. The only problem with the current system is, one, it's funded by taxes, which is theft, extortion, and slavery. And number two, uh, it's in the enforcement of involuntary contracts. So if someone uh, goes to download such and such file from such and such place, they have not agreed to a contract that restricts them from downloading that, that file. But um, you know, if they do make a contract that says that they will not uh, download that file or share that file or reproduce that file or whatever, then you know they they need to be held to their word. They shouldn't have made that agreement if they didn't uh, believe in it, and they sh that's it. Okay, um, I, I, that's I the, think... that's it. Uh, wait, don't interrupt me because I mean, isn't this my time? Go yeah, ahead. you've got twenty-seven seconds. Go right, ahead. I've got twenty-seven seconds. Well, okay, you know that's it. The, the whole issue is contract and arbitration. There is no issue of scarcity or rivalrousness. And I'll throw this out there, and, and, and certainly there's lots of discussion about it, but you know, a grain Ten in the seconds. sand in the desert can be property. It, property can be irrationally chosen. It's a subjectively uh, – and scarcity. You know, Scarcity can be a physical factor, but it's individually okay. assessed. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Two Chris. minutes, Steph. Two minutes, it, it would it would probably be good if you would actually state a coherent position. I, I don't know if you're nervous or if you just are not used to doing this, but no one listening is going to know what your position is. You, you're you're all over the map here. Um, I'm not going to pick on you for using legal terms imprecisely because that's not the, that's not a big deal. But um, first of all, I've already explained to you that we're using the word scarcity in the technical economic sense of rivalry. Okay, so the sand example is a bad one. What you're trying to say is that there's abundance of sand, so it's almost super abundant, so there's no scarcity in the lack of abundance sense. Of course, the argument that we use is that any resource that is rivalrous, that can only be used by one person at a time, um, is potentially subject to property rights or ownership. Um, so if you get a bucket of sand out of the desert, like you mentioned in your last thing, yeah, you could homestead that. There's no reason that you can't homestead it. It's not that it's not scarce. It's that it's rivalrous. Okay, so that particular. So if you if you get some water out of the ocean, there's tons of water in the ocean, but you can own that water too. We never deny that. So I don't really know what you think you're disagreeing with. You're using you're equivocating because you're using the wrong sense. Wait, of, I, I you know. Hold on, hold on, is, hold is on. Go first. I, I don't um, mean to. I don't mean also, to interrupt. You, you say that you say that the only problem That's with modern IP law is that it's it's enforced by taxes and it's, choice it's, of words. Okay, fine. You can clarify it. I'm not trying to. I mean, you're calling me a liar. Hold, hold on a second. Go on. I'm not calling you a liar. I'm saying that well, you, are, you are 
equivocating is using one word and substituting its meaning. I don't think you're doing it on purpose, but I've already explained to you what I mean by scarcity. It means rivalrousness. It's a technical economic term. So you um, equate those. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. Let, let me, we can up. have an interchange in a minute, but let me finish. You, so you say the only problem with modern IP law is that it's found, funded by taxes, which is theft, which you admit, and that it's applied against people involuntarily. Well, that's that's all that's Time. wrong with it. I mean, Time. come on, that's enough. Oh. All right, you ready to go, Chris? In two minutes again. Are you ready? You know, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of this is, is nonsense. I mean, we've established that there is, a, you know, a property right in these various things that can be traded. And, um, you know, any, any interference with that contract is his opinion. I mean, he's talking about his opinion of what is uh, scarce. And now he says, I guess, scarce, uh, scarcity is a synonym for rivalrousness. I actually agree that, that his whole argument revolves around the word rivalrousness, and I think that we should focus on that word because I think it's an anti-concept. I think it's actually a, a nonsensical distinction he's made up, he's dreamt up. He wants to artificially restrict what, other, what kinds of property other people can have because he calls it a name. And that's that's the end of it, and it's it's total nonsense. Anything that people voluntarily trade uh, is property. I mean, it has to be property before they trade, and uh, no, therefore, you true. know, there's there's no issue. There's nothing that's intellect. All ideas, uh, you know, drive property. There's no property without ideas. The the reason humans have property is because they have ideas. And the reason they have ideas is because they have individuality. And so he, he doesn't understand the, the motive force that drives humanity, and that is ideas. Ideas move the world, and ideas can be commoditized, they can be contracted, and they can be exchanged. I, I, can, I, exchange. I can write down my ideas, and I can trade them, and I can trade them with a do not. So let's get to a specific example. You know, he seems to oppose copyright. Let's, let's talk about copyright. Let's talk about or some example, some I'm concrete example. And uh, you know, yeah. Let's let's talk about you know a contract, uh, a voluntary contract to sell a book under a condition of uh, do not redistribute. You know, does he oppose okay. that or not? Is he going to interfere with that voluntary contract or not? Okay. I... <laughs> Two minutes to rebut, Stefan. I I don't even know where to start here. <laughs> Um, I see the Randian coming out in you, though. Um, first of all, I've never denied the importance of ideas, and none of us do. Um, you're just not making a, even a coherent argument. You're just saying he's saying this, he's saying that. Uh, listen, it's very – a contract would be – and first of all, you don't have to own something to have a contract about it. Okay? If I, if I make a deal with you where I say I will pay you tomorrow if the sun comes up, okay? that doesn't mean I own the sun. It means I'm specifying a condition for the transfer of property ownership. Same thing with ideas or services. Okay, If you agree to pay me to paint your fence, it doesn't mean I own my labor or that I'm selling my labor to you. Those are just metaphors. It's only a one-way exchange of property. That is, you're giving me money that you own. You're giving me money if I paint the fence, if I perform an action that you desire. Okay, All human action… Employs a scarce means, which means rivalrous means that are causally efficacious in the world to achieve some end. But the end that humans aim at is not always the obtaining of a scarce resource. You might want a kiss from a girl or to see her smile. You might want to get information or learning. You might want a certain action to occur, or you might want a resource. So in those cases, it would be a bilateral exchange of title. You have to have a coherent understanding of contract to make all these arguments. Now, if, if some publisher of a book makes a, a contract with, with, a, with a customer where the customer is not able to use the information he learns from the book, yeah, that can be enforced. I, I, no one ever disagrees with that. It's just that those kind of contracts are extremely unlikely to be entered into in the first place because I'm not going to pay more Ten for a seconds. book or be restricted. I'm going to go get a pirated copy of the book if you're going to put these ridiculous restrictions on me and keep me from using the book that I paid for. Well, he didn't really answer the the you know the example that I gave you know this particular All right, um, so, issue. So what? Again, two, two minutes. What's your question to him to get an answer from him? Well, 
I don't have any. I, I have no questions throughout the whole thing. I have well, no questions of anything. If, then what am I, I not have answering? a position what is, to put the, the, the thing is, in order for you to get an answer from him, and it could be a yes or no answer, just ask him a direct question to find out what, where you think he stands on what it is. Well, I think I know where he stands. Okay, and, well, and, ask, the, ask the question you know, then. What do you disagree with me on? Why don't you just say what what where am I what am I wrong about? You're you're wrong about a lot of things, unfortunately, and and, and you know we come to a lot of the same conclusions. So, so it's something that we could agree on. But first of all, you said that uh, there can be contracts without property. No, 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 no. There no, can't I didn't be. There can't be. Well, that's I quote. I wrote that down as you said it. And you said something along the lines of that you can contract for things that aren't your property. Is how I took it. Let's clear. I mean, let's. If if that's not what you meant, uh, you know, I wrote it down as fast as I could write it. Uh, but you know, you can't you can't uh, trade things that you don't own. So you can only contract for things. Uh, that you own. How do you know that? that? What do you get that property. From? Why do you say that? Well, I mean, the definition of property that I use is exclusive use over disposal uh, and control. You know, right. uh, you're talking exclusive about contract, control over use and disposal. I'm sorry. Right, but why can you only contract about things that you own? Well, otherwise, it's it's essentially fraud, or or no. you know, it's, no. uh, well, we have to define fraud if you're going to say that. What, what's your definition? Are of we fraud? are we not sticking to the time a lot now? Or, I mean, are we just maybe, maybe we can have a little interchange a little. Okay, bit, uh, all right. It, I'm totally well. flexible. Okay. Yeah. I, if I you don't guys are both agreeable to that, just have a have a have an interchange. Just hold your comments about one another and just keep it well, to specific to IP. Let's leave you in charge, James. That's my you know. Let's let's have a moderator. And, and let's both respect right. the moderator. Okay. I respect All right. James. All right, Chris, go, go <laughs> ahead with what you were saying. If you have some questions to to uh, Kinsella and I don't, I don't Stefan, have, have some questions back to him. All right, well, let, let me ask. Let me ask. I, I, a but wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. But I'm not giving up. I mean, you know, come on. Let's let's have some fairness. Okay. I also, uh, you know, you said you don't own your own labor. Well, yes, you do. You do own your own labor. How do you it's know? a choice. It's a choice whether you perform this labor or not, and uh, you well, can sell this why labor. Why does that mean you own it? The whole reason is because of self ownership. You own yourself, therefore you own the labor, and you own anything your labor produces. So, so you know, to some extent, you know, can you, can you define are what you're you a, are you a capitalist? Do you believe in free trade or not? Like. Do you believe in self ownership? So when you no, say things like, wait, no, I don't do believe you, in self ownership. You don't believe in self ownership. I believe in body ownership, but the self is a vague term. It's, okay. it's. I mean, what is the self? You tell me. Do we have to get into meta philosophy to discuss what self ownership means? No, I, I think, think it's, actually I that think concept it's leads to confusion. I think it's interesting, and I think it does show weakness in your position, but I'm willing to move past that at the moment. You mean you think self-ownership is the basis of all rights, and I'm wrong on that, but you're willing to move past it? Come on. Um, well, I don't – no, I think like you said, it's it's a metaphysical question to some extent. So, well, you know, I believe what is you your body, body and what is – You own your body? Do you, you feel free to interrupt me at, at will? You're like that special. You're the leader. No, the no, king. no. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Let's, let's so my point is, is that is you know, how are you going to define? Trying to keep people from hanging up on the podcast because they're going to hang up because they have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just trying to get you to say something coherent and concrete. So All right. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have a you're question. You're very condescending. You're All very right. oh, condescending. Chris, 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 you're very Chris. arrogant. That's Chris. consistent. Chris. That's con a consistent Chris. position. You're very confident. Right. At least, at least I'm clear. I have, a, I, have a, yourself. I have a question, so so we can and so I can be at least clear, right, to both of you. And I'll ask well, you. I'll ask, I'll ask you. Here. I'll ask you a question yeah. first, body Chris. Ownership. If I have an idea, if I write a book, I put it on paper, and I have an idea. Right, and I sell the book to you. However, your cousin comes and he borrows your book from you and makes copies of it, and then gives you the book back. Can that third party, if he's giving this book away now that he's made copies of, can that third party be held liable for his actions? Well, I mean, there's there's a context issue, so. I sell a book. I sell a book to you. Please, all right, do this for me. Repeat it one more time because I sell a I'm book. thinking of a lot of different things as you say that. So, okay. so say I, it one more time for me. I, I sell a book to you, and your cousin comes around and borrows the book from you. 
unbeknown to you, your cousin copies the book and then brings you the book back. Right. Your cousin then starts, you know, giving this away to people, or he might start selling copies of it. Right? Yes. You know, can your cousin be held accountable? Well, I, I think that would be a very difficult case to make in arbitration. Uh, it, it seems to me on the surface that he's innocent and he's been defrauded. Uh, someone's violated his property rights in order to get access to that book. Uh, so it wasn't him that violated the contract. It was the, it was the person that, that snuck in to, to get access, that, that committed a trespass to get to that book. And that's, again, why I say it's so simple. It's a matter of, you know, is there a physical trespass or is there a contract violation? And if not, there's no issue at, at, to discuss. There's nothing that would rise to the level of arbitration. Uh, the whole problem with the current state system, I don't need to have any more. I can come up with plenty more, sure. But anything tax funded is illegitimate. That's enough right there, period. It's over. The current system's done. And, and the second factor is, yes, involuntary contracts are illegitimate. If you didn't agree to the contract, then it's not a contract. And so that's enough. I'm sure I could come up with more reasons why uh, you know the current system is screwed up. But I don't need to come up with uh, you know these mis mystical definitions of what are property and uh, what's uh, uh, scarcity and my, what's my opinion of scarcity. Scarcity is relative. And it changes. I wanna, before, before we get into scarcity, I well, want to ask. Okay. I want while we're on that. I want to ask. A, a I want to so. ask Stefan the same question. Yes, sir. Yeah, let, let, let me let me let me. I I think Chris, I think I know where you're going with some of this, and you, you are on. No, I want Stefan. I want you to. I want you to answer. See, well, they, you they said are, that before. Before, before you go no, on to. On. And before I find you, before it arrogant. Before you go on to what? Before you well, what Chris said. I, I don't. Tell you about you're going to be arrogant, Chris. Too bad. Your cousin comes in, Man Stefan up. borrows the book, I'm right? Fine. Makes copies of it, right? Disseminates it, makes you know, sells it, whatever. Can he be held liable? And if not, why? No, of course not. No. Okay. Inf information is not ownable. Information should not be property. That's Period. false. Oh no, wait a minute, wait a minute, Chris. You, you, okay. so, you can get but, to rebut but, him in a minute. What, we'll what, get into some nitty gritty stuff here. Go ahead. When Chris says it's it's a matter of opinion, I think what you're trying to say, Chris, is a point that others have made in slightly different language, like Hans Hermann Hoppe and other Austrians. What you're what you're getting at is the fact that there's a subjective aspect to what makes something a good. Okay, it's how we regard things. So you're right about that to some extent. If you have an unowned resource in the world that no one is even focusing on, it's it in a sense doesn't even exist, right? Until someone turns their attention to it and regards it as a good and tries to appropriate it. That's when it becomes a good or a scarce resource. So in a metaphorical sense, you could say you're creating the thing by bringing it into the world of goods. Okay, But that doesn't mean that everything's a matter of opinion. It doesn't mean that rivalrous things don't exist and that they shouldn't be ownable in a property rights system. The, the problem with any – look, you seem to say you're against the state. I think you're against copyright and patent law. You're basically in favor of contract law, so I'm not sure why we disagree or where you think we do disagree, except you think it's mystical to talk about rivalrous things. Well, a lot but of the – okay. Wait, except, except that in every example you've given, you're talking about rivalrous things. You're talking about a book. You're talking about money. You're talking about the force used to enforce an arbitral verdict. This is all – these are all tangible, material, rivalrous things in the world. And the only way we can be secure in our property, our bodies, our possessions is to recognize that things have borders, that there are rivalrous things, and we as libertarians or as anarcho-capitalists believe there should be property rights in these things as determined by the first use principle and contract. So I'm not sure where you think we disagree other than you have a prediction. You have some kind of prediction that some kind of system would emerge from some arbitral scheme and some kind of contract scheme. That would resemble, in some ways, the current patent and copyright system in a free society, but it's just a prediction. And so, I disagree with you on your prediction. Is that really what our debate's about? We're predicting a different way that a free future society will look. Is that really all that we're disagreeing with? Do you even know what we disagree about? <laughs> Go ahead. I don't think we should disagree on much, and I told you that uh, from the beginning of the email discussion that we had. Essentially, I have a little bit simpler solution to these problems than you do. What's and the problem? Should... What's the problem you're trying to solve? Hold on now, wait. Am I not entitled to be uninterrupted for a little bit or Go ahead. All right, so 
and and I, I told you that you know you should simply recognize that I I've I've discovered a little bit better formulation of these problems. There's no necessity for, for anyone to have a, a, an opinion about scarcity or, uh, or, or uh, rivalrousness. And we, we need to talk exclusively about rivalrousness because I think that's what your, your whole uh, thing revolves around. And it's empty. It's, it's meaningless. All there is is contract. There's property and there's contract. There's no rivalrousness. Um, and 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 we need to make you define it. So we'll we'll get to that. Um, but uh, you said information is not controllable. That's not true. I didn't say um, that. I keep writing down what you say, and you keep saying that you didn't say it. You said, said it's this. It's not ownable, not controllable. I think you said controllable, but I'll, I I don't mind the substitution for ownable. So okay. so we can we can say ownable, and it's possible I was mistaken. You know, I'm trying to write things down quickly. All right, so information is not ownable. I disagree entirely. An idea in your mind, you exclusively control use and disposal of that idea in your mind. Even if someone else has the same idea, the idea in your mind is, is not necessarily the same as the idea in their mind, even if, if necessarily you as a third party might think it's the same. You have exclusive control over the idea in your mind. And uh, so I disagree with that body. assertion. Because you own your body, right? Yes, you own your body, you own your mind, you own everything in your mind, including the neural patterns, the, the neural activation patterns, and, and all the other You don't uh, think that's things. double counting to say you own your mind and your body? No, it's just inclusive. And, and yes, that gets back to what you said about body ownership versus self-ownership. I think that's uh, a really dangerous false distinction. Um, you you see well you seem to be implying by the substitution of the word body for self which is generally concepted uh, accepted in the so-called libertarian community which you seem to like the word liberta libertarian but, and most I, a lot of libertarians seem to accept self ownership but you, you seem to you seem to have introduced something new body ownership well to me body versus self indicates a physical just the physical and uh, you know, I reject that. It's it's everything. It's it's your soul. It's your mind. It's your conscience. It's yourself. It's your individuality. So it's not just your body. You a body own your soul. You own your body. soul. Of course, you own your soul. You own your thoughts. You own your feelings. You own your ideas. Do you own and your, you own your how actions. About your memories. Do you own your memories? You own your memories. <laughs> you have exclusive control over these things unless violence is committed against you. So, for I saw that you used an example in a debate versus a very con uh, a confused person, um, and you used the example. You asked him the question of whether a particular machine that scanned inside his body. You did not put it in context of whether it was with or without permission, which is pretty important. But you use that example of whether they could scan his body and then uh, in order to replicate, I think it was either a liver or a kidney, one or the other. And, and absolutely, if you use an invasive technology, you, you submit someone to certain rays, technological rays, you are committing aggression against them. So well, not necessarily. Copying, uh, uh, copying. It, well, what copying do you mean by invasive? Their, copying their kidney or their liver is not the issue. You committed a trespass in order to enable that copy. So copying of something in which you did not commit a trespass or a contract violation is fine. But the problem is you often seem to ignore the context. You often default to the status system, the current system, and it seems you're obsessed a little bit with attacking the current system and you have a knee-jerk reaction and so therefore you want to put arbitrary limits on what can be and can't be property. You want to say what other people can contract for. You want to tell them, no, a book can't be property. A poem can't be property. A song can't be property. This can't be property. That can be property. And I reject your, your opinion on that. Anything can be property that uh, – and, and we're not even talking about a property now. We're talking about a commodity, something people trade for. So it has to be a property okay. All right. before I, it's a commodity. I think, and, and anything I, think I, need, is, I think I need a turn. I think yes, I need a turn. I, I'll finish my sentence. Anything that is voluntarily uh, traded as a commodity is therefore okay. a priori prior to that property. No, and not it's true. not subject to your opinion. All okay. right. Do you want to go then, Stefan, now? Yeah. L l first of all, <laughs> this is there's so much confusion here in, in your in your framework. Um, 
property you're using the word property back and forth. I'm not criticizing. I'm not. Oh, I don't want to pick on you about this because a lot of libertarians do this. But you notice you're going back and forth. You use the word property sometimes to refer to the object owned, and then sometimes you say anything can be property. So originally the word property meant a characteristic of a thing. Like if you go out as an actor in the world, let's say you're by yourself on a desert island, and you employ means to achieve things. Like you get a stick or you get a net to catch fish. It becomes an extension of your will. Okay, so it's a property of yourself, and then we extend that into political theory, and we say that you have a property right in these things. But technically speaking, there's a property right in a scarce resource. Okay, so if you keep that distinction in mind, you won't keep making these mistakes about saying anything can be property, like your memories, yourself, your thought. If you have a property right over your body, then that gives you the ability to perform actions. It gives you the ability. To keep things secret or to act upon your knowledge, you don't have to say I have a property right in my body and I own my mind. That makes no sense. Your mind is an epiphenomena of the workings of your brain, which you own. You own your brain. You own your physical body. That gives you the ability to operate on these things. You you act like the idea of rivalrousness is spooky and mystical, which is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard of. We wouldn't have any possibility of conflict. Interpersonal conflict in the world if we didn't have scarcity in terms of rivalrousness. Mm. If if there weren't resources that we couldn't dispute over and have a conflict over, there would be no need for property rules in the very first place to solve these disputes and to allow cooperative, productive use of these scarce resources. Yeah. So I can't see how any supposed form of libertarian whatsoever, even though you eschew labels, you yeah. know, you're an anarcho-capitalist. I can't see call how you can. <laughs> I can't see how you could deny the need to have property rights in scarce resources that we need to, to survive, like our bodies and other materials that we homestead in the world. And once you agree with that, then you've given up the case for IP because IP rules always undermine and undercut that. Well, I don't argue. Is it my turn? Go ahead. You, okay. I don't argue for IP. I only argue for property rights and contract rights. I keep repeating this. There is no such thing as intellectual property. All property is intellectual in origin. Anything that is property originated an idea that was created by an individual, and he therefore acted on that individual. Only individuals act, only individuals think, only individuals plan, and that's the way it is. Um, so. Uh, you have never, as far as I've seen, been able to define intellectual property, define scarcity, or define rivalrousness. So if we're going to ask questions, I want that next. But before I give up my time, uh, I also want to talk about how, you know, uh, conflict. Um, you claim that uh, it can only be property if there's conflict, if, if conflict could be potentially generated. By this particular thing, that that is false. Okay, someone can irrationally desire property. Someone can irrationally acquire property, and someone else could irrationally desire to take it from them. And 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 it's not necessary. Property is a prior. It's prior to any judgment of it. Okay, property is as I've continually defined it to you over and over. Exclusive control over use and disposal. It is a metaphysical fact. It's not subject to any judgment. If one person lives on an island all by themselves and they acquire something, they have acquired property. Okay? <laughs> they don't need property uh, rights in order wow. to. That that's the fact. Property is dis, is defined as exclusive control over use and disposal. Okay. Swallow that. That's what it is. That's what property is. And any violation of that requires violence. Now, the fact that there's no one By on the who? island… If you're alone on the island, who's the violence coming from? Exactly. So there's no <laughs> one to commit violence, and therefore his property, property right is intact. Oh, my God. So you don't even yeah, realize it's, that it's property a is, a, situation is, a, is a normative you. social concept, right? You don't even recognize that. Now it's… No, I, of, I, well, I mean, I don't know. That's a very vague question. But… Um, I also, you know, okay, why don't you go ahead and, and, and clarify that question, and then I really think, James, as a suggestion to the moderator, we need to focus on rivalrousness because this is, this is the only thing 
Well, they were uh, questions. That you, th there were questions that you asked him, and so do you want to just ask those questions again? Those two questions that you asked him, and hopefully, when he when he comes back now, when it's his turn, he'll define what you are asking him. What are the two well, questions? I mean, yeah, Def define intellectual property and define scarcity and define rivalrousness. Okay, go ahead, Stefan. Okay, so intellectual property is a term used by proponents of a certain set of laws to define. You want me to define it or not? You know, look, the Constitution was enacted in 1789, right? Uh, patent law and the, the copyright law were enacted soon after. The Lanham Act, which is trademark, was enacted uh, decades later, and state laws were enacted before that. Trade secret law was a common law thing as well. Okay, so these types of laws started being called intellectual property because they were under assault by free market advocates because they saw that they were monopoly grants by the state. So instead of calling them monopolies, they started calling them intellectual property. So it's a fairly incoherent term of positive law used to describe a group of somewhat related legal rights. They're called intellectual property because the legal theory goes that they arise from the creation of the intellect, like trademarks, which are designs. Or names of products, copyrights, which are like artistic works, patents, which cover inventions, which are also come up from creations of the mind, trade secrets, which are also creations of the mind, which are kept secret. Okay, so that's what intellectual property means. So I, as a libertarian, okay, as an anarcho-capitalist libertarian, or actually I don't say anarcho-capitalist, I say anarcho-libertarian. Um, I think the term capitalist is potentially misleading. As an anarchist. Libertarian, um, what we do is we look around at the existing laws in society and we have opinions on those laws. And we say, this kind of law is close to what we would say is legitimate. This kind of law is clearly illegitimate, like the laws against not paying your taxes, laws against not serving in the military when you're conscripted, you know, laws against uh, uh, selling pornography or drugs, etc. All these laws are incoherent, uh, inconsistent with. Ownership of one's body and the Lockean property rights that accrue from contract and appropriation. Right? I, I can't imagine you really disagree with that, except maybe f for some nuances. Okay. Yeah. So, that, some nuances. so 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 then we see that we have this spate of laws in society called intellectual property laws by its advocates, and we have to have an opinion on that. Or sometimes people ask us, "What's your opinion?" And I say, "Well, patent, copyright, trademark, and trade secret both hold designs." Database rights, all these things are completely incompatible with the way property rights would work in a free society. And then someone like you comes along and says, well, I'm not in favor of that, but I believe in contract rights. Now, your but implies that you think the contract… What's wrong with that? Because it's not the same thing. These, these rights are yeah, in-ground rights. Uh, you're so confused. I'm confused. So you, yeah, you don't. I can support contract rights without not without supporting the state. That's not really very complicated. So, we don't, so you don't. And really whatever know what, what we disagree wait. on. Okay, is it my turn? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. He needs to uh, explain uh, his definition of rivalness, and there was another one too. Okay. Let, let, let me okay. let me get let me give me two <laughs> minutes to get one question out, and then I'll let you have time to try to answer it. Okay. And I would like you to actually answer the question. Just well, things to seem to be getting more polite, and, and that's going to win me over a lot better. It's always been polite. It's always been well, polite. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think you've been very uh, uh, authoritarian. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, Just, all right. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to talk about how. Right. Well, we're, not, we're here to discuss. Special. We're here okay. to discuss IP. Right. I will just say I'm here, a fellow. Wait, wait, wait. To, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, stop, 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 stop. Time out. We're not here to discuss. He... We're not here to discuss uh, egos and things like that. We're here to discuss a, a particular thing. This is a debate about IP, right? So time out on that. We're discussing IP. We uh, are it's, defining it's terms. Right now. It's a fundamental fact, though. It's a fundamental fact, though, that he has it, admitted. Wait, look, look, look. Are we are we grown up adults here? Are we going to discuss IP? No, or? we're libertarians. Okay. I'm allowed to, so to make I a want, point. So I want him to you know, discuss to make a point. rivalness. Let, let me okay. ask you a question. I, I do too, but I also yeah. I want to point out that it is a contradiction, uh, as he's admitted, that he's trying to make profit off selling books uh, via copyright. He's admitted that. So you know, it's not uh, for me to to address that contradiction is fair game. Okay, it's. 
you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I it's do. Not, it's not factually true. Um, if you go to my website, all of my stuff is available in the public domain. Okay. I'm just going by your words. I downloaded your book for free, but I saw in an interview with uh, someone you were debating via IP that you told him that you used uh, copyright to make money. No, I didn't I'm only that. using your words. I, mean, no. I I didn't research it. I said that you were gonna I deny it, published. Fine. No, I, I didn't say I made money off copyright. I said I made money selling books. Let me ask you a question, Stefan. Is all your are all your works on Amazon copyrighted? Me? Yeah. None of the well, they're all copyrighted because of the system that. Chris okay. but why, if you don't believe in copyright, why no, are you books it's automatic. You can't so, get rid of copyright. Yeah, but it's we can't talk about this. All everything you write is copyrighted. This video is copyrighted right so, now. So, do you say that basically then? Fair that, enough. Fair do, enough. Do you say on Amazon that? Um, listen, all you have to pay for my books here if you buy them on Amazon. However, you know, is it in the front of the pages? However, if you want to download this for free, you can go to my website and get them for nothing. Okay. All, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'll, I'll, let me answer. I'll let question. it go. I, I understand your position. Everything I've written, point. except for some legal books, which I have assigned my rights to the publisher, and they can do what they want with it. That's the system. Those copyrights the publisher holds, and they can do what they with West and Thompson and Oxford University okay. Press. Okay. But I, what do you what do you want me to say? I, I accept. <laughs> I want to know. Everything it's, other than my sounds, legal works, I, I put on my website. A, it sounds a bit hypocritical if you ask me, but anyway, I'm not. No, in this no, no, hold on, hold on. No, let's it's, talk about it. Why not, is it? Why is it hypocritical? Not. Why? I'll, I'll defend you on this. I'll defend you on this. No, no, I, I know. I know. I, 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 will, I, I, I know why you did it. I know why you did it. And uh, it's understandable, and it's so that other okay. people can't so take your on. work and sell it and make a profit off you. Well, look, if you sell and a gun to someone and, claim, and, and, and they issue the gun, it's your fault. Claim you know? it's their work. <laughs> and claim it's their work, right? So, and, Say again? What? And claim that it's their work, right? You did it to, you know, because if somebody could – if you said this has no copyright on it and somebody takes yeah. your no, book no, 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 and starts no, selling that's, that's it, it, right, they so, can make – A publisher comes it. to you and they say – Well, they, they could say, sue you. They could sue you. A publisher comes to you and they say – Hold would on. Like whoa, whoa, whoa. Book. Let's look at this. You write a book and you put it on Amazon, right, and it's not copyrighted. You don't, somebody takes that you book. Don't hold on. on. Amazon. Hold that's on. What hold on. Hold on now. Takes, let's let the moderator talk. Let me just let me just ask you a question. Somebody takes your book, right, and starts selling Selling it, right? But then you don't believe in copyright, so then somebody fucking sues you for copyrighting their work because they've copyrighted no, it. That's not how it works. But they could. No, they couldn't. All right, let's say they don't put it on Amazon. They're just selling it in the general public. And I got no problem with that. And they've just written a book, right? And it's on a table <laughs> at a Libertarian Party conference or whatever, right? What do you want to say? Go to my website. Let's get, some okay. guy takes the book and copyrights it. They can then, you can't they can copyright then, things. This is let my have a word. They can let then let sue you, right? Copyright things. Please. Let me have a right. word. I, I I actually agree with with Stephen on Stefan on this issue. I'm sorry, I keep s saying Stephen. Okay. I actually agree. The system is what it is, and he's working within the system. Now, what I will I will. But uh, my site has a copyright zero license. I license everything. Z I free it as much okay. as I can. This is what you guys are missing. Well, listen. I'm not missing anything. Wait, like, wait, oh, wait, I just want to say this. Lock and, on, Rose, Lock and Rose has a book, right, the, the Most Dangerous Superstition, and he says that he copyrighted it so that somebody couldn't take his book, that's just, <laughs> copyright that's, that's, it, and then sue him. That's layman's talk. That's wrong. Right. I, right. I I actually agree with anyway, Stefan. Can we get uh, to the debt? Oh, yeah, you agree with Stefan. Okay. I agree with Stefan. Let, <laughs> I want to I, find I, Chris, out. Stefan's got two questions. I have one, hasn't, one. Just one question. No, 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 just, that you haven't right, answered yet, right. what Chris asked you. Fine. And then we can as get long as I get my time, go ahead. I don't remember the question. What's the question, uh, Chris? Rivalry. Rivalry? Well, well, define – okay, fine. My question was define uh, intellectual property. AJ, define he's already done that. He did? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, he did. He talked about copyright and everything, and because he started talking he about all the. Anything. He did. He talked about no. all the laws and I everything. I'm one sentence, you know, some at least or maybe one, two, three sentences. Come, let's review it then. If if you think you did, do it again. Uh, and then uh, scarcity and rivalrousness. But, uh, well, first of all, I don't know why you want me to define IP. I'm against all the existing IP law. Well, what are you against? Define it, what you're against. That's what I've said all along. You're chasing patent, a ghost. Patent, copyright, trademark, and trade secret law. Okay. 
I'm against any law that tries to assign rights in a non-scarce or non-rivalrous resource because that necessarily invades other rights that exist. It's just like when you print money, okay, you inflate or dilute the purchasing power of money. When you create positive rights, you take away from negative rights. When you grant property rights in scarce, non-scarce resources, you take away rights in scarce resources. There's just no way around that, and the reason I was going to ask you a question was to try to get you to see this, see what your answer to this question would be, and my question is let's forget about what we disagree on. I mean you might think that there should be property rights in A, B, and C, and so do I, and then you might think there should be rights in D and E, and I don't agree with that. Let's talk about what we agree on. I think you would agree that in the state of nature, people getting along in society, they, they can homestead – Rivalrous resources like land, houses. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We have to define rivalrous. See, that's, we, I well, mean, that's what I keep stop, saying. Stop, stop, stop! I mean, so let's let's define rivalrous before you pose this question. Well, you can't ask him a question when he doesn't understand what you mean by but, you've not defined rivalrous. Okay, fine, but but you that's guys, hold on. Like two or three times. I, I deserve to make one go fundamental ahead. statement. No, this you can in a bit. You can in a bit. Let him. You no, I'll let him. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. I mean, fucking a. You're the preeminent anti-intellectual property person, and you don't have a definition of intellectual property? I mean, what are you fighting against? See, that's what I've been saying all along. You're fighting against a ghost. It's not necessary to create all these complicated issues of, of rivalrousness and scarcity. The state can be opposed simply. Taxation is theft and slavery, and any involuntary contracts like the social contract or any other contract – that the state enforces is totally irrelevant, and so, but that does not has nothing to do with uh, anything to do with on an, in an anarchist system. Any contract that two people make voluntarily is is has nothing to do with your opinion of it, unless you've been selected as the third party arbitrator. Your opinion is irrelevant. But when, so, when did I when did I ever say that contracts shouldn't be enforced? Why do you keep saying that? You keep saying that it's not to do with Kinsella's opinion of it. When did I ever say a contract should not be enforced? Well. But wait, in order to say that, you have to agree with my position, and then you have to abandon your so-called – all your your talk about scarcity and rivalrousness because now that's not a factor. The factor is the voluntary contract between these two parties, not your opinion of scarcity. See, scarcity is a physical fact, and it's relative. It can change. You know, so how scarce compared not, not to – Not rivalrousness. That's not relative. I'm not – let's get to – we'll get to rivalrousness. He's throwing that word out there, and he needs to know what, it, what, what, the, okay, what you yes. mean by that. It's so important. I agree. Rivalrousness well, is answer, so important. Sorry. But let's start Go with ahead. scarcity. Rivalness. No, no, no. Okay, let's not fine. because we're going to a different – You, you a guys do now. realize this is an accepted concept in economics that no one disagrees with, right? I mean, th there's no dispute over the legitimacy. That is an appeal to Stephane. authority. Stephane. No, no one, are you, no are one you stop, really stop, Time out, with time me. out, time out, please. Rivalness, Stefan Kinsella. Go ahead. Define, please. A rivalrous resource is one that can only be used by one actor at a time. When you use it, it excludes other people's use. It's very simple. Yes. It's, it's, right. it's basically something in, in libertarian terms that conflict over it is possible. Rivalry, that's what rivalry means. All right. Fighting over it. That, that – it's time to destroy that. Okay, oh here God. it is. Here it is. There can be an exclusive owner, someone who has exclusive control over use and disposal, and he can rent his property to someone, to more actually to more than one person. He could actually rent a house to a family or two families, so there's more than one person using it no, right away. Not, not at the same time. Why can't they use the house at the same time? They can't live in the house at the same time? The example you're giving presupposes an owner of the resource, and he can use his power as an owner to enter into contracts and to let other people use it. That's, an, that's why I said earlier – I'm not trying to get technical, but that's an in persona – well, it's an in personam right. It's a right between two people, two or more people. It's a contract. As it's not said, necessarily two or more people. I mean, you can have co-owners. You can have three people that right. engage in a contract that's, to co-own something. That's called something. two or more. That's two or more. Okay. So, so more than but one person can. Up. That's just between those people. people you can have. Contract. You could you could uh, sell a, a tour of your building to thousands of people a day, and thousands of people a day could thus use that property with your permission. 
Okay, absolutely. So now you're you're totally agreeing with me. There's only one person that has exclusive use of control and disposal, it, and and no, and the other people no. are irrelevant. There is no rivals. I don't know what it means rivals to say they're irrelevant. irrelevant. They're 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 temporary co-owners. I mean, if you loan your car to someone, or if Avis rents a car to me, I have the use of that car for that day. It's called a usufruct in the right. civil law. Just world. like if I was to say, you can read my book, but you can't reprint it. it yeah. You have the use of that book to read it, but you don't have the use of yeah, the but, book but the to right reprint way, it. But the right way to look at that contract is I'm selling you a book, and then I'm saying I'm really a co-owner of that book with you. You don't have full rights in that book. Or you could say you're agreeing to me if you use the book in certain – Impermissible ways, then you have to pay me a million dollars of damages. So that's just another contract for you to tell to pay me money if you do something you shouldn't do. Now, why you think that anyone would enter into such a contract is a mystery to me. Wait, now I never said anyone would enter in any particular contract. I, well, I particularly well, then, then wait. What are you arguing? For? I have told you over and over again that absurd contracts would not. No one would sign them in an anarcho-capitalist system, and an arbitration system would not enforce them. And if there weren't damages that they couldn't prove, uh, they probably wouldn't go to arbitration in the first place uh, because the uh, cost of the arbitration would exceed the yeah, amount of damages. Yeah, but that's, but that's, but that's that punting earned. a little bit. When you just it's not punting. It's the ma it's freedom. That's what freedom is. Yeah, but so you can't you just say cannot... that it would be settled by arbitration. You can't just right. say that because you that's freedom. You, it's not freedom to just say because you could say. You know what if uh, what if I have a big house and my neighbors are poor and they want to use my house? Uh, well, we have a dispute over who gets to use the house, so let's go to arbitration. In a libertarian society, we would just have to have arbitration. Well, you don't have arbitration over that, or you if you always did, like, get kicked out of court. You always like to examine hypotheticals out of context. Was no, there a contract? I, no. Was there a contract? So what's the contract? But that's the whole point. That's right. But but earlier you intimated that. You don't have to have a contract. There could be a social standard. Or I like never big, said any such thing. You're imagining things now. I'm not imagining it. I'm listening. I, 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 listen I, don't, your, I, I don't support any social contracts. I support only voluntary contracts. I oppose all involuntary contracts. So let me, let me okay, just clarify so, so, that so for let, you. Let me, let me ask you a couple of – maybe this will help clarify. Right, we might not disagree actually to be honest. That's what I told you from the start. Then why did you want to have a debate? Because uh, your explanation – is not as clear as mine. <laughs> Your explanation for what? For property rights and, and for contract rights. I have no need to discuss these uh, these opinions about how scarce is something. Okay, everything is scarce. You know, unless you're going to claim that it's infinite. I mean, are you going to you know? And then, you you keep using. Uh, let's use the word rivalrous so that you can't do this little trick. Okay, this right. is the trick you guys play. This is equivocation. James, why don't you introduce a debate about rivalrousness because I think the whole thing revolves around this one silly word. Do, do you really think that there should not be property rights in rivalrous goods? Is that have really you, your have, opinion? Have I you, believe. Have, have you that, guys ever seen? Have you guys ever seen the movie uh, "The Gods Must Be Crazy"? Yeah, yeah. A long time you, ago, yeah. Have you seen yeah. it? The, the first bottle, yeah. yeah. It's been first, a while. Yeah. yeah, well, there you go. That's that's what happens when there is something that's scarce in a society. People all want to own it, and before you know it, there's fighting and things like that, and that's why the guy ended up taking the Coke bottle to get rid of it. Let, let, let me give an example. Okay, people say that there are people fight over religion. They don't really fight over religion. That's, that's a metaphorical description of the motivations of fighting over bodies and land. And resources. All fights are necessarily and always, all conflicts are always over scarce resources in the rivalrous sense. Okay? So if I want to make you be a Christian instead of a Muslim or vice versa, and I say, if you don't convert to my religion, I will cut your head off, then it's really a dispute about your body. If all I said was, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to curse you, then I would say, well, go piss off. I don't care. But the threats are always physical, physical force against physical bodies. So the dispute is really over bodies. This is what slavery is. Slavery is one person claiming to use the right to coerce another person to get them to do what they want to do. This is what we – I think we have to agree with as libertarians. I'm so, not a libertarian. You I'm said an anarcho-capitalist. Anarcho I, I, you know, libertarians… 
a lot most libertarians from my perspective are minarchists. They they embrace the state. Um, I don't yeah, well, you and I, you and I are the anarchist type of libertarians. I don't know what the big. I'm small, not a type of libertarian. The, the, the I'm an small anarchist. L, as they call it. There's a small L, which so, is so. So I, I was trying for, for it's a different it. debate, but but I don't I like that word. Let, let me get to my question, okay? And then you can. I'll give you five minutes to do whatever you want. So my question for you is a couple of things. Do you and you seem to say in your video with Shanklin, in your dispute, in your in your discussion with Shanklin. Um, if someone comes up with a new invention, like a new energy machine, and they just sell it on the market, and other people observe this and they learn from it, they could compete with the guy. They could even make a very similar or maybe identical machine unless they signed a contract with him. you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Now, let's say you go on the internet tomorrow and you find a, um, a downloaded um, – uh, an uploaded copy of a Harry Potter novel. Now, you, you've never bought a copy yourself. You've never made a contract with… Her publisher or with her, if you if you download those bits, on and print them on your laser printer at home, are you violating anyone's contract? No. Nope. Okay. Well, then you're you're very solid. I mean, you're you're with me. So so then the final question would no, be. No, I'm not. I'm not with you. See. Yeah, you, you are. You continue to have this leadership. Uh, this you want to hold the ring. I'm just saying you agree with. No, it's not true. No, you, you do. You you want to be the leader. You want people to follow you. Oh, You're very full of yourself. I'm not Wait, following. I would I'm love for someone else to, to do this. I don't even. I'm like not agreeing with you. I like you. Theory, no. <laughs> no. you just? You're hey, agreeing listen. with me. Can't you You're just, agreeing with me. Can't you just okay, kiss fine. and make up I, you two guys? I agree with you. We agree with each other. And be fine. friends on Facebook. Can't you can't you uh, unblock one another and uh, send each other a uh, friend Absol request? I, a, I never and kiss, blocked him. and kiss and kiss and make up because there's obviously you both agree. On, I'd be happy on, to. Did I, on did I intellectual? Block you? Did I, I guess block I think you did. I think Tucker did too. But anyway, Tucker uh, blocked me. Here's the thing. Well, I don't remember. Neither, here's either. the thing, right? Either here's one of you. Wait, I never got to my question. Well, I need to ask my question. I want to hear his answer to my question. Which okay. question? So my question is. And I just want to go step by step to see where we diverge if we diverge. And if we don't, then I think I agree with you, Chris. I agree with your magnificent, simplistic, uh, uh, simplified theory of… Don't get carried okay. away now. Okay, whatever. Do you agree that – like let's say you homestead a piece of land in the woods and you build a log cabin, that you own that piece of land and your, and your, and your house, which I mean, means you have a property right in it. Do you agree yeah, with that? I mean, I think so. I mean, I don't. I mean, you know, I'm not you're... trying to trap you. I'm just trying okay. to agree on and some yes, basic, yes. uncontroversial stuff. Now, you yes. might fight with me over whether that's a rivalrous resource, but it is. But anyway, let's let's move on. I'm not you have that. your house. I would, you... I would say you don't own it. I say you use it. At... James, come on now. Don't don't well, don't intrude with those those. Views. Owner... <laughs> but, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Ownership go ahead. means the right to use. So the question is, do you have the right no, to no, use no. it? So anyway, I disagree with that. You don't think you have the right to use your house? Ownership is exclusive control over use and disposal. It's not a right. Well, that's that is a right. That's what the, a right means. It's, it's a right just to the fact. It's a fact. It's the natural. The law of nature dictates it. It's what happens. Absent okay. violence. Absent okay, this, violence. This, this is no, right. it's an important no, no, distinction. No, no, let let Stefan get to his question. Go on, no, the, okay, I, this this is why you were. In my view, confused about your example about that's why wilderness. you're confused. Hold on. No, this is why you you think Crusoe has property on on a desert island by himself because you don't you're seeing it as a metaphysical fact. You're not seeing that it's a socially relevant thing. But I don't think it affects your analysis too much. My, my it's question not a is matter this. of I don't see it. It's the matter of we have a fundamental disagreement. I believe property is a fundamental metaphysical fact. You believe it's subjective, open to interpretation. You were the one that you were the one saying uh, it's subjective. Not earlier. absolute, not axiomatic, not universal, not eternal. You're a fuzzy. You you believe in keeping everything fuzzy. That's why you like libertarian over anarchist. You, you think you're very I'm an smart. anarchist libertarian. What Come on, about? let's get up with and, this. And you so, want so to my question, Chris, let me get to stop, the question. Chris, 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 stop, stop. Let me get to the question. I'm, an, I'm analyzing. You're a nihilist. All right, all right, all right. Stop. You're a nihilist. Stop. Stefan. We're, we're, we're both ex Randians, so, I mean, come on. Go ahead, um, Stefan. What's the question for Chris? I'm just telling he's the got, truth. So you asked him. He's got this log cabin in the woods. The question is, so imagine that you own your cabin and you have a neighbor who has his own cabin, 
and you sometimes meet and you know help each other out or talk or whatever. Now, if your neighbor wants a right of way over your land, mm -hmm. you could grant that to him contractually. Would you agree with that? Yes. So you could say, I'm going to grant you an easement, right, sure. or what's called a servitude in the civil law, right? So you can cross over this corner of my land. So basically, you you and your neighbor. I really are don't like that term, and I don't like any of this nonsense about the state civil law. But go ahead. It's not the state. I'm just giving you language. So so basically, your neighbor now has a property right to cross over your land. So you and he are co-owners of this scarce resource. Would you agree with that? But as defined by the contract between you. I would yes. But I would I would add that you're both absolute owners. There's no limitation to ownership. It's that as the absolute owner, you are able to restrict your own ownership rights. You are able to give some portion of your own because well, as an owner, you have ultimate use of of con well, you have ultimate well, control over use and disposal. So well, you can grant limited access. But let's yes, say, I agree. Let, let's I agree. Say, Go ahead. Let's say you and I become best friends someday, which is highly unlikely. I don't and, think so. No, but let's say we become best friends. And, I and like we, you. Yeah, I like you too. You're, you're cute. So let's say we, oh, um, we want to buy <laughs> – let's say we want to buy a condo in, in, in Aspen together. Okay? It's, let's say it's a $500,000 condo, and we can't afford it on our own, but we each have 250k to pay. You guys are okay? looking make a great couple in that condo. I think so. Well, people would confuse us. And uh, um, but anyway, um, so let's say we pony up the money, we buy this condo together, and we make an agreement between ourselves that you can use the condo on even numbered weeks, and I can use it on odd number of weeks or whatever. So we agree to this ahead of time. Now, isn't that possible? A co -owner a co ownership arrangement like that? I think so. Sure. Okay. So, but I wouldn't have the right to use the condo in the weeks when you have the right to use it. Well, but wait, you did. But you contracted. No, you know, we, we bought this thing together as 50-50 equal partners. Yeah, you made a deal. I don't see yeah. what the problem is. It's a contractual splitting of, of contractual rights. I mean, that's that's exactly the implementation. But it's not of all a contract. It's property rights. I mean, you and I are co-owners of this property. Contract rights are simply the implementation of property rights, so there's nothing I, wrong I, with sharing. I don't, I don't strongly disagree with that. So what? I'm okay, wait, 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 wait. As a property owner, you can give away, you can share, you can sell. There's no, there's no conflict. Yes. You As can the, destroy, you, have ultimate, you can abuse, you can, you can loan. You can, you can burn abuse. it down. Yep. You can destroy it, and that's why I object. The one very thin disagreement. I mean, this is so off topic. But one very thin disagreement I have with Rothbard is is he essentially – I haven't read this in a while, and it's not a big issue to me, so I, I might have to review it. But I think, he, as I recall, he says that uh, parents are essentially owners of their child, and I disagree. I think that they're not owners because if they were owners, they could essentially suicide their child. They have ultimate control over use and disposal. You can suicide yourself. You can't suicide your child. That's murder. And uh, well, I well, Chris, wait, Chris, wait, I, I assume hold on, hold on. I think parents are temporary custodians until children homestead themselves, according to no. Rothbardian homesteading law. I agree but with we're you really off topic. Well, we're really off topic now. Well, it's not it's not completely off topic. You're actually right to make a tangent there, but uh, you know, I thought for being such a vociferous critic, you would have read what I've actually written, but. You know, I have a whole article on this called How We Come to Own Ourselves. I have not read everything you've well, written. Well, that's fine, but uh, there's a core of work, and, and, and um, you know, I, I agree with you that you don't own your kids, but they don't homestead themselves either. The, the fallacy, the, the flaw in the reasoning here is that all property rights come from homesteading. I don't think they do. I, that's why I distinguished body ownership from other things earlier because I think it makes a difference. I yeah, don't think you I mean, you don't you don't own your body because you homesteaded it because to homestead something you have to be an actor. To be an actor, you have to have a body already. So it makes no sense to homestead your body. It sure does. Kids homestead their body. They grow into their body. They learn to exercise their mind, their mental control over their body. That's homesteading. It's pure and simple. So homesteading means 
acquiring or appropriating ownership of an unowned resource. Setting Are a boundary. Sure? Setting a boundary. I think. Uh, uh, wait, that's, hold on. Hold on. I think hold that. On, well, let on. me let me make a reference because um, I think that Butler Schaefer and Boundaries of Order, a fantastic book, wonderful book. I love that book so much. But I think the most important uh, conclusion or the most important element of that book was unstated, and that was that. In order to establish a property right, you have to establish a boundary. He never exactly said that. He implied it, uh, and I just well, wanted to give well, credit because I think it's a wonderful book. You don't need to give credit because Hoppe is explicit about this in chapters one and two of Theory of Socialism and Capitalism when he talks about the, the right. entire process of acquiring unowned scarce resources is called embordering or putting up borders or boundaries. That's, that's his entire theory. That's why he's the most… Important theory in this. Uh, theory Interesting. In, in this I've regard. read that book and I, I don't uh, particularly remember that comment. I certainly agree with it. L look at chapters one and two. They're very short. I've never but, disagreed but, with uh, really anything that Hoppe said. I mean, well, um, Hoppe is against IP, so maybe. Well, then we that. disagree on that. You know. Well, I, not, but I don't support IP. IP. So. I mean, we've right. been over this. I mean, you keep putting you want to you want to put that on me, but I, I don't. Support. I, I like labels. I, I, I'm what you call a conceptual being. Actually but you're not. Life. You you're a subjectivist. You're an immoralist. You don't believe that the law of non-aggression is universal and eternal. Let's let's get into that. Let's let's get into how I think you're a subjectivist. You no, know, it's not eternal because there's a heat death of the universe coming, so it's not eternal. And but I thought you were the one saying that property was subjective earlier. No, but no, you guys keep objective. you guys keep preventing me from getting to my question, which is go on then. Just get on with it. Get on with it. Remember, remember the hypothetical I'm posing about the guy with the log cabin with a neighbor, and you grant to him the right to cross over. Right now, let's suppose you have a community association, ten, twenty, a hundred people living near each other. Let's say they all agree on a restrictive covenant, and they say. We're going to all agree with each other that everyone living in this neighborhood, we will not use our houses for commercial activities or a pig farm. We won't paint our houses orange, whatever. That's legitimate, correct? I well, have, so. have the two people that have uh, assigned each other uh, this right to travel across the one person's property agreed to the association? Uh, I'm assuming uh, they've association. agreed to it. I'm saying oh, if okay. they agree to it, it's legitimate. I'm just making sure so. we agree on this. I think so. So, now, so, so you asked me what my definition of IP was and why I disagree with it, and here what I'm getting to is what intellectual property does is it is it imposes this kind of… Restriction on the use of one's existing resources without a contract. Now, since you're such a big advocate of contract, you should I be mean, the biggest. So that's yes. what it does. So I agree with you. If, if I go to the well, government. I told you that. I, I've repeated this over and over to you. The problem with the current system is that they enforce involuntary contracts. But it's not just a current system, it's the very idea. No. Of having property rights in non-scarce, no. non-rivalrous resources. No. No, nonsense. It's not – in an anarcho-capitalist system – see, you, you're stuck in this present system. In an anarcho-capitalist system… Can, can, you you just say, can you say, comma, dude, after what you just said? That would really add a cherry on top. Just say, dude. Dude. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So, you're, I mean, I just think you continually default. You know, to the present. So, so you, think I'm, you think I'm right about IP or that you're right about IP and that I happen to be on your side? I think that we're both right. I think what I, you're doing is you're arguing about words amongst one another. You both agree that a third party in the current system has no right to enforce a uh, so-called contract that somebody who's made something against somebody that you don't have a contract with. I think you both agree with that, right? You agree that a third party, i.e. the state, does not have a right to go after a third party that had no contract with the originator of the uh, so-called oh. item. You agree with look that, at, right? look, at, look at James tying it up here. Don't okay, you? That's why I, wanted I agree with that. I like it. You have agree with you agree with that. Yes. I do. And you're just arguing about words. You're just arguing about terminology between one another. How that's, each wait, one of you argue, right? That's what I told point? him from the start. That's you what know? I told what him. What else are anarchists going to disagree about <laughs> other than words? Well, that's the point. So my question is that the ultimate question here to uh, you but know, wait, no, there are some video. important distinctions. I don't think there are. I don't think there are. 
There are, I don't think there are. I don't think there are. I think it's this: well, either you agree with a person that you and and that person have a contract that uh, you're going to sell him goods and he doesn't have a right to copy it and make well, money off you I win. or give it away or whatever. No, position. it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, because basically, He's if you that. if if you and him have a contract, then that contract states who gets to arbitrate it. The other person might say, okay, well, I I, I agree, but I want uh, I want something in the contract where I get judged by. You know, twelve people of my peers. I don't want to go to a arbitrator. I don't want one person making a decision whether they think that I broke the law or you know this this contract or not, right? So it's 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 between the two people when they when they sign the contract. Like I said earlier, your cousin comes round, he borrows a book That's from nice. you, and whether it's regarding contract, uh, whether it's trespass or whatever, he borrows the book and he copies it, right, and puts the book back and starts selling it. Nobody sh can use force against this person because there's no contract. Whether you leave the book in an airport and some guy picks it up and starts making copies of it or whatever. I, you know? I think I think we can all agree on something, and that is that Chris did a lot better than Robert Wenzel. I don't know who that is. I think uh, you know. I, I think that you two he, children. He I think, crushed me. Well, I think Wait. that you. I think that you two children have actually done a good job of, of staying pretty <laughs> calm, and I just hope that you will unblock him, Stefan, and you guys I will. will kiss him. I I you will guys will. Him you guys will send each other a friend request and become and become friends. And kiss and make up and give each other a kiss right now on screen, and then you can get into getting your contract together for that condo in Aspen hey, or wherever hey, it's going to be. Yeah, maybe we'll co-author a book on the revised theory of IP next week. You know, I think know. you should do. Get a Google Plus. Get a Google uh, right. document going and write something together, and then put it out there. I think this has been a great discussion. Obviously, there's been a misunderstanding. I don't think uh, Facebook does a good job of uh, controlling debates. I think it's always better done on video, things like this. And terms and things have to be defined uh, prior to a debate or during a debate. And time has to be allotted. Otherwise, people do uh, tend to talk over one another. And I think that this has been a pretty uh, good discussion. I think we've had a, yes. a, a, a bit of fun with it. And it's yeah. it's been great, and uh, I think something good came of it that you two guys are going to be friends after this video is over. Well, I think it's, you did a good job of moderating. James. It's like it's thank you. It's like that. Uh, did you you guys ever watch that uh, thing called Soap back in the late seventies, early eighties? Yep. It's like that. Will Stefan kiss a makeup with Chris? Do -do -do. I, I like Chris now, but I hate you, James. So. <laughs> That's fine. You can hate me. You can love to hate me. Go on. Anyway, you were saying I did a good job of, of doing the moderation. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to that. <laughs> hey, you I did. mean, you know, I don't accept that we're in agreement. You are. You are. No, I don't. It's just, you're just not in agreement of words. Chris, and let's, it's silly, really. let's agree, I've won, agree about that. Okay. I've established that no, scarcity... When both and people agree versus? on things, when people both, <laughs> both totally agree irrelevant. on IP, the, the state has How no come right. I, wait, I'm not allowed, am I not allowed to disagree? You can, you can disagree, okay. but you don't. agree to disagree. Can, <laughs> let's agree to, agree to we disagree. Can, we can respect each other and get along, and we can still have slightly different viewpoints. But, you know, let me let me put my viewpoint out there. I don't think that what we have here is agreement. I think we still have some disagreement. And let's be honest about that. I don't think that scarcity and rivalrousness you, you, you are has not, assessed. You are not disagreeing on IP. What you're disagreeing on is terminology, which could be a different oh, debate sometime down the road. It's just terminology. But IP, you agree that men with guns from the government cannot come and enforce a contract as a third party against somebody that didn't agree to sign a contract. You agree. Yes. And that's the whole debate. The old IP. debate was about IP. We're both against the current system. Yep, and you both are. If there was a, if we lived in a stateless society, you would both be for two people signing a contract, coming up with an agreement, and agreeing to it on a voluntary, mutual, consensual basis, and that is fine, regardless of any other third party coming well, in and saying, "Well, you can't do this." Well, you're not part of our contract. I'm not sure of that. I mean, he, Stefan seems to think that he has the right to interfere with that contract because he thinks. The, the particular commodity being traded is not scarce or is not rivalrous, and uh, and and you know we need to we need to engage on rivalrousness. We haven't done that, and that is the center of his uh, position, 
and my position is not reliant upon that at all. My position is reliant upon private property and contract rights. I don't need any definitions, mystical, have, nonsense. Maybe that's, have, debate, maybe that's have, debate number two. I have a question. I have a question. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, have, I have a question for Stefan. You can think about this before you answer it. It can be answered in a different thing. You live. We live on a mountainside, right? You, Chris, and I. And uh, Chris owns right up to the top of the mountain, and it snows on the mountain, and there's rain, and it comes down. It collects in a pond, and it it runs down over Chris's property where he's living, and it comes down onto my property, right? However, Chris decides that he wants to sell the top of the mountain, right, because he owns up to the top of the mountain, to you. And you come along, and he defines a border with you. He's quite entitled to do this. And he defines a border with you, right, and you, you, you buy the property. But then you and him decide that he, in the, con in the contract, you and him, he says, you say that you want to dam this up and divert the water, right? Now, I'm using the water that comes down the mountain, right? And now, all of a sudden, you and him have a contract. You're going to dam it up, and you're going to divert that. So now I have no water. There's no well on my property. I don't get to use water. Would you classify that as an act of aggression against me because now I can't water my crops? I cannot, you know, you're not including me in the contract. You've not come to talk to me about this. I can't drink water, and I'm going to die. Would you regard that as an act of aggression because you and him have gone into a contract saying that, you're going to buy this, but you want to dam up the water and you want to divert it, and he says, okay. Yes. It's an act of aggression? Yes. Okay. That's my judgment. I, I honestly couldn't follow it all. It was it was too much context, and um, I had a lot of other things on my mind, and I'm sorry. All right. But, but I think I agree. I mean, I was, I was kind of paying attention, and I, I think so. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I'm focused on on this thing, you know, that that we're yeah. calling intellectual property, which I don't. What agree you're doing, with. what you're doing, is you're focusing on <laughs> words that really are, you know, uh, I, I mean, do mean focus on words because you are in agreement with IP, right? Okay, but and I started <laughs> off this conversation <laughs> with saying. Did I not, Steph Stefan, did I not uh, say that we had a lot of common ground? You despite did not. a very I no, did. You did. They did. That's right. Despite saying that we had you, a very you different said, you said a lot of things. That's one of the ones things you said. Alright. Well. We can continue this. Okay. It, it's it's been good. At least at least it's not like, you know, uh, you know, I'm invading uh, the experts turf and, and you know, I'm Mr. Know it all and, and anybody who dares challenge me uh, better agree with me or, or else because well, otherwise you're a dumbass. Chris. Uh, and all these other appeals to authority that you've been embracing uh, and all these other things, you know. Listen, uh, listen, yeah. honestly, if I was going to appeal to authority, don't you think I could maybe do a little bit better job of it? I mean, no, no it's a useless <laughs> argument. No, Logic but my, wins. My, my point is, I, Truth I, don't, wins. I don't try to um, use my status as a patent lawyer, for example. I mean, I know the law, and I know what to, I know what to talk about. The so-called law. Man-made slavery. That's what he's talking no, about. No, no, no. It's no, a bunch of I, bullshit. I'm actually, I'm, I'm hostile to the whole system, so I'm not okay. going to give credence But you guys. did say in the video with the other dude who uh, claimed to be now, sort of... Now, that's a good reference. I can, I can, I'll post the link, but, but I'll no, remind you, you of what you said. No, you, you won't. I will. I, I dare you. I'm happy to do it. I double you, dare you. Let me remind you. You said that, uh, you know, um, a def being a defense attorney, there was no problem with that. Well, let me tell you some problems with, with being a defense attorney, Mr. Attorney. Um, you're embracing, you're legitimizing the current illegitimate system. Uh, I was just called for, for so-called jury duty. And they showed us a bunch of propaganda videos, and they admitted in the video that the jury system, quote, unquote, the jury system has evolved. Well, where's the constitutional amendment that evolved it? Where is the constitutional amendment that gave them the right, uh, the privilege, to back, change back, back, back 12? Back up a little bit. Wait, you look like wait. you're sucking the microphone. Back up a 12-person a 12, a 12 jury, as defined in common law, to six. 
Where is it that gave them the authority to screen people out hey, according to this? Hey, Chris, Chris, silent whisper. You're sounding a little bit like a crank now, kind of tone it down a little bit. The crank meter is kind of going up. I'm passionate against this present system. I'm not sure why you don't understand that. I think because they are putting a lot. Of, they are putting a lot of. Like it. They are putting a lot of, um, you know, peaceful people in cages where they're raped, and their lives are destroyed. Their families are destroyed, and 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 so if you participate as as a so-called defense attorney in this system, you are legitimizing what is essentially clearly an unfair trial. I'm not, defined, a, I'm not a defense attorney. But, but you said there was nothing wrong with being a defense attorney, and I'm saying there is. Why? Because you're, embra you're, you're endorsing. Look, in order to be a defense attorney, you have to submit to the judge's authority. You have to speak as they tell you. To be an attorney, you have to uh, swear an oath to the state. Isn't that what I'm saying? And, and, you, have to be, and you have to be a member of the Communist Bar Association. <laughs> You I mean, have to agree. Wait, and if you did, say did you say the pledge of allegiance when you were a kid in in, in school? No. Really? No. I thought it was sure. bullshit. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I I never, you know, I, I never. Believe. Well, that's your yeah. opinion. Every every but, kid I know said the pledge of allegiance when they were kids. Well, I mean, irrelevant anyway. What what Not happened really. as kids? Same thing. We were kids. You know, we okay. were in well, prison. Okay. Well, I was a young lawyer. We were indoctrinated. Okay, but but now we're talking now, and you're the expert. You know, you're the I'm, you're the. I'm not a defense attorney. You're the libertarian, but you said that being a defense attorney, there was no problem with that. And I'm sitting here telling. What you I was that saying was, if you help the government attack people, that's bad. But if you're helping the government, if you're helping people defend themselves against the government, that is not bad. I agree with I that. I don't see how, and believe me, if you get attacked by the government one day, you're going to want a defense attorney to help you out. Yeah, possibly, but nevertheless, their well, speech, their speech is censored. If they say something the judge doesn't like, they lose their license I know. to speak. Do you support licenses to speak in the court? No, not then unless you I'm don't checked. support licensing of attorneys. You don't support the present no, system. I'm totally opposed. And therefore, to participating in the present system is endorsing the present system, just like voting. No, the, therefore doesn't follow. Do you drive on the roads? I ha the, the roads are monopolized by force. I don't have to go uh, argue in the courts. I can argue from – and even in, in that situation where, where that's in my, my – where I'm accused, I can so defend what, so myself. So what are you saying? Are you saying that despite Ayn Rand's and the objectivist advice that you have to martyr yourself and you can't be an attorney? You have to be um, a loser? No, are actually you be I, a loser? Actually, I, well, I don't consider my objective objectivist. I don't consider myself an objectivist, but I do well, actually you, agree no, with you, your position. You were, heavily, you were heavily influenced by objectivism, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. You, you can admit that here. It's a safe place. Okay. It's a safe there's place. No, I'm a, there's nothing to be ashamed about. I mean, we all yeah. go over our youthful obsessions with Ayn Rand. Although I you haven't gotten over your IP stuff with her, but still, I I, I think I know what's going on here. Okay. Right. Right. So. You know, because I am an anarchist, so I obviously fundamentally disagree with Rand on. Well, you're an anarchist capitalist. M most anarchists that I know that are radical don't use the word capitalist. I'm curious why you do that, because even I, because <laughs> I, I think I for myself, I don't. I don't worry about what other yeah, people. Yeah, but what's the reason? Well, because I believe anarchism. Let's ask James. Let's get James in here. James, what I do you think? I believe anarchism about? is capitalism. I want to get James in here. I, it is capitalism. I, I think that the the extension, all these all these extensions of uh, capitalism, <laughs> communism, socialism, you know, and all this, they're they're all to me, they're just bullshit. You know, uh, atoms. There, isms. there are a bunch of, of isms of, of the uh, word anarchist, anarchism, right? And at the end of the day. Um, Here's my here's my thoughts on things. If you think that things should run naturally in life, um, that you should just mind your own business and leave other people alone, so long as they're not using violence against you, and you're not using violence against them, or you're not defrauding them or stealing from them, you know, yeah, don't, then don't. you you are you know you are an anarchist. Um, don't violate contracts just because you think you have the right. 
Well, the yeah, we, we, just because you think you know better what's rivalrous or I don't think we're going to get. I don't think we're going to get into an argument about rights tonight because, like, <laughs> uh, I don't think rights exist. Uh, actually, I think that we, you know, the Earth was here before us, and uh, the Earth is going to be right. here after us, right? So, uh, one one note, and I'll, I'll send you an email, but um, in addition to the other article I mentioned, <laughs> I do have a whole article on libertarian theory of contract, which I think is extremely, definitely, directly relevant to what we've been talking about here tonight. So people that really want to follow this up in a, in a systematic, you know, coherent way… Take a look at my co contract theory article on my website, and also the how we come to own ourselves argument. Which do you want to give, give your what? Do you want to give your? Do you want to give your? Do you want to give your? You own yourself. I agree. I make not a mistake. Your body, I make not your body. Not your body. You own yourself. Chris, Chris, I'm not perfect either. Okay, I'm sorry to bust your bubble. I never. I, I understand. Fair yeah. enough. Let's I use continue. the word property sloppily too. I, I make mistakes and I use the wrong word. We live in a fucked up society and we live in a language. This, you, gotta, you gotta hit yourself when Absolutely. you do it, you know. But that's my point. You dismissed me and you shouldn't have, and, and let's continue the discussion. So what now you're a stalker? No, you can go away. <laughs> you're free to leave me alone. That's kind of a freaking comment. This is not going to this is not gonna turn into a Wenzel argument. I mean, it was all nice. Was yeah. all nice Shanklin's the one who, who said I should I should debate this with you. Honestly, and you, you have. have. Yeah, Shanklin's stirring the shit. I know what he's doing. I, I honestly don't think you you, you have anything. Uh, you haven't you haven't disputed anything I've said. You've accepted them. You've There's lost the debate. I, I just, you I should admit that. it. You should admit it. I admit that I dispute that. That anything can be that is subject to to contract is, is that's traded voluntarily as property, regardless of your your your, your opinions. Hey, what why, why did I block you? You weren't like anti-Semitic or something weird, right? You never gave me a chance. You asserted authority. You told me I should kiss your ass because you're the great leader, <laughs> and then you blocked time. me. So I don't well, then. I will That's unblock you. I will unblock right. you. I think right. you should be. I think you should get Tucker to unblock you. I like too. Chris. Talk to Jeffrey. Chris, a good kid. I like you too. I like you too. I've always liked you, and and it, it upset me when you blocked me because I was only trying to communicate with you. And yeah, that's why this all Facebook. started. I created an IP. Facebook is an IP enemy by my blocking tactics. Facebook is bullshit for having debates. Enemy. If if people are gonna have a debate, it needs to be done in a private group. Uh, be just doing those two All people, right. those two people, where they define terms and everything prior, Absolutely. right? Prior, nice job, James. and 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 that nobody else comes in because then you get everybody else jumping in, and then once the discussion, That's once right. both of those That's people right. have ended up with a conclusion that they either agree or disagree or agree to disagree, then they can invite other people in to see the discussion let, because let, when you get Blame, let, me, in. let me blame Jeff Tucker because Jeff Tucker told me to accept everyone. So I started accepting people and started getting all these random people, and then I would get these kooks, and I just started blocking people like on a, on a dime because I had such an easy acceptance policy, so maybe that was a mistake. But I, I suggest I that we, we end on something we all agree on. Let us be friends. We all agree on peace. Right. Yeah. Freedom. Prosperity. Peace, freedom, cooperation. Justice. That can sell right rights. on rivalrousness. We all agree on that. Nice. Can sell a what? That I'm right on rivalrousness. <laughs> no, you're... no, we can uh, agree on that, right? Well, we haven't discussed. No, we can't agree on it. If you're talking about somebody wants to steal something from somebody else while he's, while, he's using, using while he's using it. Hey, Again, James, how, how are your dogs, man? You've already admitted it. <laughs> You've already admitted it. A yeah, contract yeah. is absolute. Okay, Chris, regardless you, you said of your that opinion, 17 times. You, you've reached your limit. You can't say he's already admitted it. But anymore. you have. No, no, I mean, don't say it again. Don't, you, you're violating the rules. All right. That's enough. All right, fine. James, you tie it up, man. Tell us about your dogs, and let's tie it up. Well, I thought this was a great discussion. Um, you know, there's a bit of banter back and forwards. It wasn't like the stupid Wendell uh, debate. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that basically the 
there's an agreement here on IP. Just the choice of words is uh, not very good. Dog. Dogs are barking because of the wildlife, and uh, you know it's just uh, it's it's just choice of words, wording of things. I think we're all in agreement here that uh, IP is um, it's wrong. Um, if you have two contracts between two people agreeing, then that's okay. IP bad, contracts good. I can agree on that. Chris? Yes, absolutely. Amen. And Chris, Last you're not nearly as stupid as Wenzel. I would, I'll give you that. <laughs> and you're not that's, as green. That's a joke. That's a and, joke. And, I'm you're as, and you're not as green as you are cabbage. It's not a joke, though. Time. It's consistent. It's consistent <laughs> attitude from you. It's got an ego. Come it's on, man. It's got an ego. It's got an ego. Problem. Come on. G yeah, give me all my ego. All right, guys. Right. Enjoyed Amen. it. Listen, it's been a great debate. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Check out Stefan Kinsella at stefankinsella.com. That'll work. stefankinsella.com. Subscribe, share the video, and like it. And peace, everybody. Freedom and prosperity to all. Peace. All right. Good night. Good night, everybody.